This video is for Lauren Gray. If you're not Lauren Gray, please keep on scrolling. My name is Brandon. We've never met. This man is Brandon Heberlin. The one that kisses nine-year-olds, right? I did kiss a nine-year-old! Who would do such a thing? Ever since what happened back in 2020, I have kept myself clean. If you live in Kentucky, keep an eye out for this man. Let it go. It was years ago. People have forgiven all these other creators, but yet you can't to me when it's been two, four years ago. Loki, I don't care. Y'all didn't get rid of EDP. Respect me the same way you respect them. If those creators can change, that means let it go, leave it alone, and honestly, I don't care anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, the person you just saw is a man by the name of Brandon Heberlin. Now, he made his first appearance over on TikTok a while back from making this really uncomfortable date proposal to an influencer by the name of Dixie D'Amelio, who is the sister of another influencer known by Charlie Emilio. I'm not gonna act like I'm well versed in those creators and who they are, but the name does ring in my ear as popularity as I've heard it float around a bit. Now, he gained a little bit of notoriety from his proposal and was a bit of a laughing stock overnight. However, this fueled his desire to want to become a large and well-known creator. And while well, well-known he somewhat became, it was for all the wrong reasons. See, after his heartfelt proposal to Dixie D'Amelio over on TikTok, he then began to spiral for any chance of the limelight again. However, that spiral would eventually turn into a full-on crash and burn from where he was standing. From an awful date proposal, down to a live stream confession where he admits to endangering minors, all the way to comparing himself to EDP for some reason. I don't know why you would do that as your poster hero, horrible attempts at comedy which fall flat right at misogyny, and eventually his own arrest. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be dissecting the story of one of TikTok's worst creeps online. I want to introduce myself and say my name's Wonder. It's super great to have you here. If you like today's video, I'm getting more into this type of content and I'm trying to fill out my groove, so definitely let me know some critiques down below on how I can make this better content for you to digest. So one more disclaimer, I just want to say I first found this video from the creator on screen. Uh, he did a really good job doing a breakdown of it, so I'm going to leave a link down below. I would highly suggest going and checking it out, but I'm going to keep the intro short. I just want to say, I hope you're doing really well. And if you're not, I hope it gets better for you. Once again, my name's Wonder. And let's get right into today's video of Brandon Heberlin, one of TikTok's worst creeps online. Now, with any story or person of interest, we have to ask ourselves the big question, who is Brandon Heberlin? Now, as I mentioned before, Brandon's first claim to fame was over on TikTok, where he made a very infamous and cringy video directed at Dixie D'Amelio. And I'm gonna play that clip for you here today so we can kind of get like a prologue to our character of interest here. Now, I will say it is just a really uncomfortable to watch because it plays out like an interrogation. Like I feel it's like a POV, like I'm Dixie D'Amelio and I've just been captured by Brandon. I have a lot more to comment about it but I really just kind of want to give you a taste of what we're working with here today. I tried to carbon date this level of humiliation and I couldn't find a specific date. I just know it's a bit of an older clip. I've only been able to find reposts and such. So again, can't really find out when this initially started, but we'll just say this is going to be the prologue. Let's roll the clip. This video is for Dixie D'Amelio. If you are not Dixie, please keep on scrolling. Okay. Hi. Dixie, uh, my name is Brandon, we've never met. I just wanted to ask you a couple questions, if you don't mind. So the first question I wanted to ask was, uh, I do have a crush on you, and I just wanted to ask you out uh, on a date or something, or maybe we can meet, hang out. I'll be flying to Los Angeles soon, so uh, maybe we can meet there, if you don't mind. I mean, it's okay if you say no, I'm not pressuring you, just give it some thought. And the second question I had was, uh, how did you get popular on TikTok in the first place besides your sister? I know you created a song not too long called uh, Be Happy and One Whole Day. I just wanted to know your tips. Thank you for watching, and I hope you see this video. Thank you. Now, I kind of got secondhand embarrassment watching that. I don't know if you feel the same way. Let me know down below. But it's just really weird. So he starts off and says, Dixie, I need to just let you know I do have a crush on you. Yes, I do. I do have a crush on you. As if that's something Dixie's been like on the edge of their seat up at night thinking, like pondering, picking flowers off, you know, sunflowers. Like, oh my, does he love me? Does he love me not? I don't really think that was on uh, on her mind. He also says he's flying out to California, and she can 
can think about it if she wants to go and meet him in person, which I'm just going to take a shot in the dark. I don't really think she had to think too hard about that. I don't think she was up at night uh, weighing her options. I don't think that transpired. But way to really woo her, you know, to really entice her by asking her about how to get famous on TikTok. Now, as I mentioned before, overnight, he kind of became a bit of a laughing stock and became a bit of a meme over on TikTok. And I guess that kind of gave Brandon the attention he was looking for. I mean, he did want to gain popularity. I guess this just wasn't really the popularity he was looking for. So when he started to trickle off and fall away, he decided he was going to up his antics and start a comedy career. Now, we're going to be watching a clip where he takes a shot at comedy, and maybe it's just not my cup of tea, but I'm going to let you be the judge of his type of humor. I got another one for the girls. How about no ministration March? You cannot ministrate in the month of March. Is this a good idea? Hmm? What y'all think about no charge December for the girls? Huh? Great idea? Wow, Brandon, that was really funny. That was so haha. -ha. I, I, oh, that's a, you're a comedy wizard, aren't you, Brandon? My goodness gravy, get this guy a Netflix original. Brandon, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm gonna be your manager here. That was stale. That was like month old bread left out on the kitchen counter, stale. I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark and assume that your brain never developed past the age of six. So I'm just gonna kind of explain here, uh, not really in depth. I'm just gonna say that that's not physically possible for that to happen. I don't really know who's laughing at this. I, I think only you're laughing at this. Maybe you hype yourself. Up. Now, I made a couple of clips like this to my understanding where he tried to take a shot at being coming a comedy wizard, I suppose, online. And it didn't, it really fell flat. Not many people were laughing. No one was really amused and people were just poking fun at him. This is when he began to crack a little bit. I don't know whether it was trolls or if there was some credible sources going around, but some allegations started coming towards Brandon, accusing him of endangering minors in very disgusting ways. I'm sure I don't really have to paint you a picture as to what I am hinting at here. Now, after some time of Brandon getting called all kinds of awful things in his comments, whether this be from trolls or, again, credible sources, Brandon had a bit of a crack and a meltdown on a TikTok live. And on this TikTok live, he confessed to doing something pretty damn heinous and disgusting. Now, we're going to watch the clip. I have searched everywhere I can to try to find the full-on live stream, but I just keep coming across numerous reposts of people like, oh my god. So I've only been able to find a couple seconds of his admission of guilt. However, I will say he makes it even worse worse after this admission of guilt. Because once he gets called out and people start slam dunking him over on TikTok, he then decides to turn his horrible actions into a comedy skit where he downplays what he did to a minor. I want to show you guys these clips in their entirety. Let me know what your thoughts are down below and let's reconvene here in just a couple seconds. Hey man, I, I did kiss a nine-year-old. The one that kisses nine-year-olds, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard about him. Um, yeah, what's, what's up with him? I mean, he's like low-key weird, you know? Uh, who, who would do such a thing? Exactly, bro, who would do such a thing? Low-key? I don't care. It's some, some stupid things that, uh, A, I'd probably be arrested for, and B, I probably deserve what is being uh, told to me and stuff. But um, I'm just here to let you know that Ever since what happened back in 2020, I have kept myself clean. I did kiss a nine-year-old! So yeah, uh, if you're just as disgusted as I am, well, we're on the same page now, aren't we? As he admits, he had a horrible interaction with a nine-year-old, which I suppose he just finally cracked and assumed that someone was hot on his trail and he shouted it to the world. I can't even imagine being his neighbors. Then he follows it up with his, again, horrible attempts at comedy. I feel like I'm watching two people with a phobia of personalities just sitting there talking back and forth about downplaying horrible actions again towards a minor and I so I believe his attempt here was to I guess woo the crowd back over downplay it and be like guys it's not that big a deal he did something bad in the past but it's it's kind of it's whatever but when you do it yourself when you pretend to be yourself downplaying your own allegations you just look like a dickhead it's like okay I'm so glad you're over it Brandon what about the victim and which goes to just show how much of a self-centered individual this person is not once does he apologize to the minor or for the horrible things that he did, he doesn't care. Low key, I don't care. 
He just wants to downplay it and deflect blame. If he actually cared, he'd turn himself into a police and seek out a psychologist, but that's not what he does. No, no, no. This is just comedy for him. This is just a big old skit for ye old Brandon to put him back in the limelight of TikTok. I don't understand, man, how you can just be so sick and twisted to involve other people in your disgusting fantasies, and then you turn their pain and suffering into comedy, if you want to call that big old quotations around comedy. Again, not to sound redundant, I'm very happy that you're doing well, Brandon. What about the person you scarred for life? Oh, that doesn't matter because it's not that big a deal to ye old Brandon and the rest of the world should just get over it. When you endanger a minor, I don't really think it's your place as the perpetrator to tell other people how they should feel about your sick and disgusting actions. Maybe that's just my opinion, but I would assume that's the opinion of the populace. But would you believe that this man digs his grave even deeper? Probably, yeah. So after his skits and admission, he ends up having another conversation with TikTok where he once again admits to the allegations but tries to deflect the blame and says you should show him the same respect the internet showed to EDP 445, Logan Paul, and James Charles. And out of all the noteworthy figures to choose, why would you choose any of these people? Particularly for this situation, EDP 445, a guy who... <sighs> I mean, it speaks for itself. Well, let's just take a look at the clip. I will say it's a bit of a longer clip, but it's very important for us to watch so we can really kind of break down the anatomy of this goofball's brain. Y'all need to shut the f up, let it go. It was years ago. Literally, people have forgiven all these other creators, but yet you can't to me when it's been two, four years ago. Uh, I expect you respect me the same way you respect them. And honestly, I'm gonna be honest, I don't, care anymore because I'm going to say this once and I, I, I'm I done. I'm going to keep posting on here. Y'all can do whatever you want with your lives. I don't care what you comment, but from now on, I'm going to stay public. I'm going to keep posting. I'm going to turn my comments on, not have any filters. Y'all can say the amount of that you want to. And uh, yeah, so um, all in all, you need to shut up, let it go. Literally thousands of other creators that have been exposed for the same thing has been forgiven. I hardly see any more comments on their pages explaining what happened to uh, their allegations. Uh, EDP doesn't, I'm, I think EDP is still on TikTok, by the way. I've seen his account pop up on my For You page multiple times. So EDP, y'all didn't get rid of EDP. He's still on TikTok roaming around making videos. He's got his comments turned off. Well, actually, yeah, he's got his comments turned off, but he doesn't have his comments turned off on Instagram. I see a lot of uh, the comments on his Instagram, but he does, doesn't give a anymore. He's not living in a 4x4 jail cell. He's actually very much still living his life. He's probably got a job on top of that. He's also still somewhat... <sighs> has a career and before I mention anything else I just want to let you know that there are also multiple creators out there that have not done the similar thing that has been forgiven I'm not going to compare myself to them but I will give examples for example Logan Paul back in 2018 he made that stupid uh, video in the forest here he is four four years later boxing Floyd Mayweather literally started his own drinking company prime and literally has a podcast that has over four million subscribers literally James Charles he he took a break for like two months uh, amidst the allegations he came back he's still doing good still earning money uh, still grinding all, uh, literally videos all day. So I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to tell you this right now. If those creators can change, and they have showed they change, and I have too in the last couple of years, that means y'all need to shut the up, let it go, leave it alone, leave it in the past, sealed and buried, it should not be brought up again, and y'all are just doing this because... Again, another admission of guilt. I also love how he... How he he downplays Logan's video as just a silly little forest video. There was there was a dead person involved in that video. I don't really chalk it up to a silly little forest video. But the real meat and potatoes that I kind of want to touch on here is why would you compare yourself to EDP 445 and then think that that makes you look any better? He says the internet gave EDP 445 respect and that he's still around and he has a career and that he saw his account and he's not in a four x four jail cell. So why should the world be 
treating old sweet little Brandon Hildebrand any different. Um, so EDP having a career. Um, how do I how do I put this? No, the f he does not. He, he, he that's gone for the man. The only reason you see EDP four four five pop up every now and then is because he's usually out trying to get yield cupcakes and such, and he's reminiscent to an aggressive form of cancer that just won't go away. It's not like everyone's welcoming him back with open arms. Like, ah, you may have sent poop pics to a minor, but you know what? Yeah, you turned a new cheek, buddy. The dude just won't go away because he thrives off the little bit of revenue he can scrape from the old barrel of his channels. That's the only reason you see EDP. Also, if I type in EDP 445, I get so many videos dunking on this guy. So I don't know in what universe you're viewing EDP as the poster child of predators. I don't know where you're getting that idea from, but again, I didn't really hold out much hope for Brandon's intelligence to begin with. So yeah, no, I wouldn't be running to EDP 445 as like a shining example of innocence on the platform. But going back to people like James Charles and Logan Paul, these people will forever have a stain of infamy no matter where they go online. It doesn't matter if they rebuild their career and they're making revenue or whatever. They still did horrible things and they will always have that black stain next to them wherever they go online for the rest of their careers. These aren't idols, man. These aren't people you should be like, hey, well, they got away with it. The only reason most of these people come back is because they have a large following and lots of money to begin with. What do you have, Brandon? Creepy date proposal videos. I do have a crush on you and I just wanted to ask you out. The last thing I want to touch base on with this clip is he says that people should just get over it. And like I said before, it's not your place to tell people what they should and shouldn't get over. Y'all need to shut the up, let it go, leave it alone, leave it in the past, sealed and buried. It should not be brought up again. Literally thousands of other creators that have been exposed for the same thing has been forgiven. What about the nine-year-old you endangered and scarred for life? Uh, did we ask if they got over it, Brandon? No, again, I'm, I'm so happy. My bad. I'm so happy that it is all about you. There is a minor that was endangered and harmed and you're just like, everyone should get over it. No, I think people should always put a spotlight on you, Brandon. This is something that you have no right in saying that people should get over and you absolutely should be run off the platform wherever you are because you're a danger to those online and those who are unable to protect themselves in such an online space but hey i'm just one person and i'm sure you have the big question on your mind as well did the internet forgive brandon after all this this video is for lauren gray if you're not lauren gray please keep on scrolling no i suggest you stay right the f here Here's a reminder of who that person in the video clip was. This man is Brendan Heberlin. He is 20 years old, 5'7", and weighs 240 pounds. He was arrested on July 31st by the Eastern Kentucky Police Department. He was charged with fourth degree assault, third degree sexual abuse, and second degree unlawful imprisonment. He was initially enrolled in Eastern Kentucky University, but dropped out due to the allegations. He has allegedly sexually assaulted one female. As of this point, the victim wishes to remain anonymous, so I can neither confirm nor deny what her age is. As of recently, he's living in Louisville, Kentucky. If you live in Kentucky or out of state, keep an eye out for this man. This man should not serve as a role model to anyone. And I think he deserves prison time. Once we confirm these allegations are true, he needs to be locked up. Report his online accounts, block him, do whatever you need to, to stay away and report this man. People like him should serve a lifetime. So first off, I just want to give a props to this guy over on TikTok who's just at home. And he was like, you know what? I see this guy on my feed. I'm not going to let him kind of get away with it. He completely did a good job just calling out this guy's, uh, for lack of better terms, bullshit. He showed that somewhere along the line, Brandon was actually arrested and he was met with kind of a plethora of charges. Again, they're censored in the video. So I, I have to do that for obvious reasons, but I'll leave a link down below to the original clip so you can kind of hear the uncensored version. Now, obviously these charges are insane. Unfortunately, I will say to be expected with this type of guy, especially after the things he admitted to and how he very clearly shows a lack of empathy or care for how his actions affect others. Pretty disgusting human being in my uh, personal opinion. Now, the one thing that really stood out to me in these charges is he was arrested under unlawful imprisonment and I was unfamiliar with that. Now, I see a lot of channels, they'll say a person was arrested and they'll state the charges, but they don't really go in depth on what those charges really mean. So I want to take a look and read off the charges and their degrees in which they vary, specifically in the state in which Brandon lives in so we can get 
get a more accurate idea of the fines and penalties he could be facing. Now, the first charge we have is a in the fourth degree. Now, as I was reading, this doesn't necessarily mean he has to have uh, physically attacked someone. He could have had the intent to attack someone. So just wanted to clarify that assault in the fourth degree in Kentucky is punishable by a maximum fine of $500 and up to 12 months in jail. If the crime is committed during an extreme emotional disturbance and the maximum fine is $250 and not more than 90 days in jail. The next charge is sexual assault the third degree, which is classified as a class D felony, which carries a potential sentence of one to five years in prison. And to clarify, a class D felony typically means a smaller crime, such as possession or anything along those lines, property theft or disturbance. Personally, I don't think this specific type of crime should be roped into something so petty because I think it's heinous regardless of the severity, but let's continue. Now, the next charge Brandon faces after this is unlawful imprisonment, which is the one that I didn't know about and how that really worked. This is a class A misdemeanor punishable by up to one year in jail. A person commits this crime when he quote unquote restrains another person. So it's looking like Brandon either restrained, held down, or prevented someone from going a certain place. I don't think he was keeping someone in his home for a long period of time, but whatever he did, he completely restrained someone from being able to obviously leave his possession, which is again, extremely creepy and disturbing. I hope these definitions add a little bit of clarity so we can get a full on context and informs you a little bit further on the type of person we're looking at. So the situation ended up getting so bad that Brandon himself dropped out of college due to so many people starting to recognize and understand the type of person that he really was. To my understanding, he's probably just off and hiding. I can't confirm, nor will I show the clip, I'll just blur it, but I saw a person over on TikTok who apparently contacted Brandon's own father showing his clip where he said he had an awful interaction with a nine-year-old. So I can only assume there's some internal family conflict going on there, which honestly, I hope his family kind of recognizes the danger that he is, especially if his family has younger kids. It's a disgusting situation and you don't really need that in your household he's 18 years old he can go find a place it does not matter you don't need to facilitate that in your household especially when you have kids I would argue it's an obligation to make sure that home is safe for them at all costs even if that means removing a son of yours from the household now alongside these charges we also learned that there was a single victim and that was female he can't confirm or deny the age because it's not publicly listed because the person chooses to remain anonymous whether this is the nine-year-old he mentioned we don't know so we're unaware if this transpired to more than one victim or or not. Now, it's awful enough that it already happened to one person, but we can only hope that this remained an isolated event. Again, extremely awful that it happened. It takes a lot of bravery for whoever it was who came forward to bring all that information to light. It's honestly a very scary thing to do, especially to someone who harmed you in such a way. So props to that person for coming forward and really ensuring that this person is behind bars. And if not behind bars, at least have a spotlight and a record wherever they go online. So ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the end of today's video. I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by. Again, I'm getting kind of used to these type of videos. So if I seem a little scuffed, seem a little off, just trying to build up that confidence. So I really appreciate you bearing through with me. I also just kind of wanted to say a personal thank you. Now I'm not going to give exact numbers or anything like that, but for the first time in a very, very long time, I was able to pay my rent via YouTube. And I don't know what to say other than thank you. Like I, I sincerely owe that to you guys. Once more, my name is Wonder. If you want to see me after the video, I should be over on Twitch streaming where you can come and say hello if you want a little bit of a break from all the negativity of this video topic. I'm going to keep the outro short. Let me know your suggestions for what I should cover next. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Do something nice for yourself. Pet a dog or a cat. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.